We so what do we got here, Mr. Weiser? I don't know so what the fuck is, is happening. A mail oh, bag. Okay. Ooh, it's like listener mail. Yes. Wow, we've got a whole thing. So these are some one-offs. This is from um, people who sent us this coffee. I brought okay. my list of questions. Is there a way we attack these? Where do we in start? Any significant However you want. There's like a. There's just read it. <laughs> and weep, mother <laughs> just bitches. Read it. Just read it. Yeah, I just want to know it's good the, before the, I read the, it. The package Weiser. one is really long. And okay. There's questions on the second page. Let's let's start here then. Hey, Chris and Jared. Sorry, Chuck. Oh, damn, <laughs> dude. That's ice cold. That's Shame upon you and your family. That's how, that's how I like it. My name is Georgia. J-O-R-J-A. Oh. Georgia. Just like the state, oh, Georgia. Just spelt the way it should be. <laughs> our leadership team enjoys tuning in weekly and starting off our weekly meetings by listening to your podcast. That's awesome. Taking notes and talking about it in our world and how it applies to us and how we can benefit from it. Lately, I've been trying to think of ways to ensure our managers are confident enough in themselves, but also in the ability of their people so that they can carry a little less weight on their shoulders. It seems to me that stress has been the common word being passed around, but I do not believe that is truly what it is. I believe they're causing themselves to be stressed out by taking on responsibilities of others or not delegating enough because they're lacking in trust with their team. I'm trying to figure out a good way to help the managers work through all this. Do you guys have any advice on this matter at all? Can't wait to tune into the next podcast. Thanks for sticking through this lengthy email. I'm excited to hear back from you both. We'd love to connect more. Stay caffeinated. Georgia. 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 Wow, there's a, all these places. Bully Brew Coffee House, The Boardroom, North Dakota Coffee School. Let me see. And Georgia's affiliated with many things. Georgia. Georgia. Yes, an old I... sweet song. Stress is definitely a word that gets thrown around a lot. I'll give you that big time. Because everybody can get stressed out by a lot of things. But do you feel like it's often either related to systems or people? I mean, boundaries is a wise one as well. But yes, I mean, I get you're very generalizing. Systems is clearly a good one. I think that one's an easy one to kind of dive into. People, people, yeah, in the context of maybe communication is actually the one I'm thinking of. Mm, you know, yeah. like better communication across the board. What is that? I, I'm. Uh, you, when you're not there, you're trying to mentally kind of, uh, you know, dissect what you think might be happening when you hear these words. So in my experience, we'll say Ooh, when that's EO style, <laughs> yeah. well, I, 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 that's the best I can do. Cause that's really what I'm speaking from is when people are saying that they either are not clearly aware of what's happening interrelationally, or they see things that are not going as well as they'd like at a standard and they're not saying things about it and holding people accountable and usually some sort of other gray area when it comes to, you know, stuff. and then there is the external world of stress and, and the boundary of bringing that to work and sharing that with your team and everybody taking that on because you're overly empathetic. So those are the three things that come to mind offhand while I could probably go into more. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I think about from our team, when our team has felt stressed, I feel like, it's often because we haven't outlined really specifically like what is important for us that they're taking care of, mm. right? Like that they feel that it's that what that what we want them to do isn't so clearly outlined mm -hmm. that then they right they're trying to do all the things and trying to do more than we even probably expect them to do. And that's where, like, I feel like we've had us like people that have had a source of stress from where it was solved when we gave them like really clear, like, hey, like, you don't have to worry about all this stuff. All we want you guys to focus on is like A, B, C, D, mm -hmm. E. Mm -hmm. Like, you guys do that, like, thumbs up. Yeah, you're yeah. doing great. Like, you don't have to stress about anything else. And yeah. I feel like that has been really helpful in the past. Yeah, that's great point. Right yeah, there. the clarity's the clarity's incredible. One of the other things that's jumping out to me, you know, stress has been the common word that's being passed around, but I do not believe that's what it truly is. I believe they are blah, 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 blah. It doesn't actually matter what you believe. You gotta what we out. need to do is figure out what's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can figure that out is with conversation. Yep. And depending on what your relationship is with your team, that could be a really simple conversation or you might have to do some bridge building before you can get mm -hmm. into that kind of conversation. Big but time. what we need to do is it's almost tying into the other 
earlier part of the conversation, we need to get away from these just kind of catchphrase words like stressed, I'm stressed out, I need work life balance, I need this. Like, what's really going on? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, um, I think the coaching habit is a great resource for yeah. all of those conversations. Great coaching, like the yeah. seven essential questions to kind of get to the heart of the matter of what's really happening because mm -hmm. guesswork is just a dangerous place to be. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. I, I think that's, that's your, those are your steps. You gotta, you gotta be finding out for sure. Cause, and it's great. You reach out for perspective to people who have been in the industry for a long time and us, but the reality is you got to go find out yourself or else you don't know. Cause I don't know either. <laughs> Claim and fuck around and find out. Yeah, dude. That's just, there's a whole thing. <laughs> there's a whole there's a whole thing. There's a whole matrices we could get into. I go for a smash burger right now. Do you guys have one of those? Andre, you guys have a smash burger next door yet? Smash or? burger. Smash burger is everywhere. Smash burger is know, the anaerobic it's basically, co fermentation. Smash burger is the term for <laughs> burger now because there's no such thing as normal burger. It's, it's all smashed. smash burger. All you have to do technically to get a smash burger is drop your spatula on it for a half second and it's flatter than it was before. So that's been smashed, right? I don't drink naturals and I don't eat smash burgers. I'm I not actually saying burger. that. I'm playing a part right now. Mm -hmm. I ate a smash burger the other week. And I love it. It was definitely a hamburger that you, it was smashed, just as you described. <laughs> Every time, dude. This is hand chopped it's wagyu, burger, but I smashed bro. it. Mm -hmm. It's cool. like, I'm bored. So make my burger different. I mean, Smash unless you get it. that really crispy stuff, I'm I like, I do maybe like it, the crispy stuff. Yeah, sometimes. totally. Like but nice if it's not, if it's yeah. not that, oh, no, give you, me the thick, juicy, like yeah. chewy, sort of fall apart in your mouth burger. Yeah, like, there's nothing worse that's than a, better. a flaccid smash burger. Yeah, like do a this droopy, like more flaccid droopy smash, smash burger. burger. You that's gotta have the crisp name. around it. Yeah, yeah. Dude. If there's no crisp, there's no way, dude. I'm Hashtag. gonna use this as a promotion for the next pop-up. Flaccid oh, yeah. smash burger. <laughs> Just put, put Andre on the yeah. burners, now, dude. They're gonna be so yeah. stressed <laughs> out like, of Next week, come get smash burgers at Cat and Cloud. Not flaccid. That's actually all we'll put it on. That's our marketing material. He's gonna bring a smash burger, not flaccid. Hashtag. Holy smokes. Let's get into another one. Throw some. Okay. <laughs> now keep going, dude. Nope. He's cooking. No, dude. You should have seen me at SCA. I was cooking at oh, SCA. Oh, I've seen you at SCA before. No, I've no, seen you do this... things that no one would ever believe. Well, that, <laughs> that's a different guy. Okay. <laughs> I've seen a lot of different versions for this you. Was, uh, I've known this you for was... about 20 years now. Have you ever think about that? <laughs> <laughs> Mm, I got moves. We go to Seattle, <laughs> we go to Portland, we We've go been all everywhere. You've seen me throw tuna this out of tuna. a four-story <laughs> building before for no reason. For no a reason. Full can of tuna. Just cause. Just cause I can. In it. <laughs> Fuck it, bro. I was like, this you know, what, you guys having a good time? I'm having a great time. Someone's got it on film somewhere. We need to hit up Ryan. That was the whole point. This, this is tuna. This is tuna. <laughs> Huck. And nobody knew it was. Anyway, recently i've been really thankful for your podcast for all you listeners i'm reading another listener. only recently have i been <laughs> thankful for your, yeah, I your podcast <laughs> prior to, prior to oh recently, no look sucked but here, here we go okay i've only found it about two days ago oh well from this email Fine. being sent and Good. i've loved every Thank minute you. of it starting all the way back in 2015 and making my way to the current episodes well, will be a great respect. undertaking to say the least oh my god i feel These sorry are facts. for you if you do that um i'm super excited to make my way through your journey <laughs> and learn through yeah, let's get this guy a, a package all right get let's get him guy. actually a bunch of what do you need to, to go through that some coffee for sure coffee <laughs> yeah, for sure you're gonna need a lot sure. of coffee stay up late yep I've recently <laughs> keep going <laughs> get him a cocktail can you email him a cocktail <laughs> Can we digitize it? Yeah. Lick it through the screen. Turn it into an NFT or whatever. Penicillin that thing that was happening for a month. Zero, zero, I've really only been in especially zero, copy as a hobby until recently. I've considered trying to make something out of it. I figured a really good question to ask you guys would be this. As someone who wants to get into business as a general practice, potentially one day, I'm curious if within the copy world, there is a use slash need slash market for brokers seeking to bring coffee shops and or coffee farms together to collaborate develop business relationships and from bringing people together. Okay. So broker relationship builder, connecting coffee shops and coffee farms. This comes from a standpoint of simply not knowing the entire process of sourcing direct trade and all the logistics that go in behind the scenes. Mm. I would love some guidance or areas to work from regarding business brokers within the coffee world. Thank you. And keep up the good work. Caleb Wowza. Hamilton. That's a great this, question. This lands in I the Chuck sphere, dude. Yeah. I mean, I'd say like as it's someone starting out a business like that you would be competing against all of the large exporters that have established relationships with producers in origin countries and roaster and cafe relationships in the u.s yeah so i mean essentially right what you're talking about is a is a coffee importing business um i mean 
And let, I mean, I guess maybe you're or talking like, about just making introductions between people, but uh, I haven't ever heard of maybe say roasters or cafes willing to pay for that. Right. I think I'm thinking more of like uh, the business side of it is really involved in like the relationship between the roaster and the producer, as well as the coffee right. involved in that. Because to make it effective, you would really need connections that have built on, you know, essentially decades of relationships in certain areas. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, you could point to like Aleko as like someone sure. who successfully did that, but he literally has spent his whole life. His whole life. He had a lot of connections whole, and literally trust his built. Whole life working in the coffee industry. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. Shouts out Aleko. We had a great non alcoholic beer in Chicago airport before we went home. Was Always like the Leco. Yeah, that's a tough one yeah. to break into. Yeah, because but I there mean, are... where could he work? Maybe if you wanted to, like, just jump in without being the person. Right. I mean, then then I would say you'd want to uh, start working at a coffee importing company and learn the ropes and see what it takes. Because I think some of the people who are successful stepping out, well, and you want to learn. Ideally, you want to learn both sides, right? So ideally you're wanting to work on the exporter side and the importer side, right? It's like, I mean, and to be honest, like before, so when I was working in Ethiopia at TechnoServe, like we were essentially the exporter. Right. Right. Um, we had all the producer relationships. We were connecting them with buyers in the US and Europe. We were moving the coffee as the exporter or with the exporter you know, to those buyers, importers. So, right, it's like that. Yeah, I mean, I actually had like similar, it's like, could I, with that experience, could I have started like an exporting or importing company? And even with that experience that I had, there was a ton of information that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And just how hard that would be. And and the, the capital that is required by those businesses, right? Because just it's the logistics of, money, sure. of way of the way coffee moves is that the importers are buying coffee when it leaves the port, right? At Origin Company, they're having that financed, right? And they're not really selling the coffee to the roasters until the roasters need it, right? So a really they big have a lot of cash out. Yeah, a really time, big yeah. part of running an importing company is having the financing. To finance that is it's a huge amount of money to finance all the coffee that they've purchased right it's it's having a you know a warehouses millions of dollars full of yeah millions of dollars with warehouses full of coffee green coffee that you haven't sold yet and you know we saw how hard that was on importers during covid mm. right when the demand mm -hmm. of coffee crashed in super uh, scary in consuming countries but you know all these importers had already purchased coffee from the origin countries and they faced huge cash squeezes during during covid when that happened so it's a that even that is is really can be like a complex business um but but like you said yeah to to learn the industry it's like to work at a exporting company to work at an importing company to understand how those businesses work and then you know there are examples of people that have been successful starting their own it just you're on a 20 year um, arc. Well, yeah, yeah. And that's, I think the whole point is like to yeah. be a proper pro in this industry, that's probably what you need to do is invest in around a 20 year arc and then learning the whole process. I mean, like you could go I think 10. 10 is probably fair. My gut feeling is you can reinvent yourself completely yeah. in 10 years if you chose to do so. Yeah. Sure. Like in almost any industry. Up. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and well, like, like, uh, just like you're doing now, like reach out to people, um, go to SCA, make relationships, right? Like, um right it's like i couldn't i couldn't have i couldn't be where i am right now without you guys right and it's like vice versa and it's like the relationships you build and getting out there and meeting people and the network that you create it's like that's really invaluable mm -hmm. as well because this is a lot for one person yeah oh my gosh could you imagine trying to do this is by yourself oh yeah I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a, what, but it's a, single, but it's a great parenting halftime is gnarly. So, but again, it's like that's a business? great example of like a question of like somebody coming in and seeing. And it, it, I mean, literally, like I probably had this exact same question coming out of my time with TechnoServe and being like, yeah, I really like, I really like my experience in the coffee industry. And it's like, I've had this experience on the exporting side and I've mm. seen what TechnoServe does in terms of 
connecting producers with buyers it's like yeah maybe i could do that right and then just like yeah just the 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 from a to z of like that happening just it just takes a lot of time experience meeting people learning how things work but i mean dude it's like you can make it happen if, best of luck yeah, you, you should totally do it if you're passionate about you're, it yeah if you're passionate mm -hmm. about it Hit us with the next one there. You want to go? Bossa Nova? Go? This go one's got some three. nice like nice paragraph breaks. Yeah, it looks like there's some breaks there. I though. really like it. Did Wiser type out all of these? Wiser doesn't know how to type. Chat hey. GPT, dude. <laughs> yeah, this is, these aren't even real. <laughs> <laughs> Write some viewer emails. Make us three just made them up. mail questions. <laughs> <laughs> jo oh, that's cloud. why George is spelled like that, Chat GPT. <laughs> Long time listener, first time emailer. Yeah, it's Chat GPT. Chat for GPT. Sure. For Absolutely. This is Elias, owner at Tetherball Coffee in Mandarin, Florida. Flow Rider. Feels like we just opened, but we're coming up in two years. Oh, congratulations. Nice. I've been listening to the pod off and on since the beginning. As I binge on some episodes headed out to Costco for the shop today, I was filled with joy to hear you guys still sound like yourselves. Dude, same <laughs> guy. <laughs> it's because I'm still me. I want. <laughs> <laughs> 20 years of Jer, the anniversary is coming up. Still got it. <laughs> I wanted to mail in to let you know, thank you, that you being authentic inspired me to open up the shop in a very authentic way as mm -hmm. well. What I mean by that is I grew up in a small Florida town on an island. So beach life from surfing to skating to bright stucco houses and tacos were all part of my culture. That oh. sounds awesome. Yeah, Everything take me there. there dude. Is awesome. Should have stayed, dude. I'm actually picturing the new Roadhouse remake. <laughs> Haven't seen it yet, but. Pretty sure they're in Florida. Glass Key. Boca Shout out to Raton. Glass Key. Don't even know if it's a real place. When I got into coffee about a decade ago, I didn't yeah. have anyone... To look to who was both yeah. professional and sounded like me. Respect. Mm. Relate to that. I Not to that mention one. that despite being in Florida, the coffee shops were very leather couch, iron, and no sunlight. That's really Deep good mahogany. imagery, actually. <laughs> guy's a good writer. With gloomy baristas. When I headed up to Atlanta or New York on the East Coast, same deal. So anyway, as I moved through the various positions in the coffee world, I'd be sweeping up or opening shop and be listening to you guys sound like skaters slash California people who also started in fast food and got killed in coffee under some other whack small business owners and then <laughs> opened a company. I like this guy. This guy's dope, dude. <laughs> Elias is the guy, dude. <laughs> Reminded me that I could do that. And now I have a space that really reflects the effort and staff that is bright and loving and not reflective of the local coffee culture, but is pushing it in that direction. So... Thanks, y'all. Keep on pushing. Stay dialed. That was just love me. Yeah, that was not wow. even a question. Again, that's just like the SCA thing. I'm just like, that's what I love about SCA is like conversations mm. with. I agree. With I do have like to say that. this dude is a really good writer. Like this is a very well written email. He lasts. I like that. You yeah. touch chat Chris. GPT now. Yeah. Ah. Is it fake? No, it's not fake. <laughs> Elias, this guy's selling you out, dude. Elias. No, this is, this is well written. Chris, I like dude. it. It's very thoughtful. You should write a blog. Or something. I hope you write all the coffee copy for yeah, your coffee copy. shop. Yeah. Dude, thanks, Elias. Yeah, that's rad. Thanks, dude. Elias, for letting us be in your life, man. He's stoked. Yeah, just stoked that he's he's doing him, you know? <laughs> yeah. Gotta do you. Hey Elias, do I see us getting a timeshare on your island? Elias, or what? can you record a podcast so I can sweep up the shop and listen to you? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> dude, my mic's all droopy. Sorry, go ahead, Chuck. I'll fix this off air. Hey guys, my name is Mallory from Baton Rouge and my husband, Kevin. I recently saved up, bought a sample roaster. It's been a long time dream. One day own and operate a cafe and bakery. Um, and this is the first step in doing the thing. We come from a typical humble beginnings, roasting out in a parent's garage, selling a curve coffee bags of friends and family. We had a few opportunities to partner with local businesses for wholesale and retail bags. Our friend also bought in for a small portion of our now growing small batch specialty roastery called Fringe Coffee. All of us have been baristas in and around coffee for years and years. And I sort of recently stepped into bakery management and the vegan gluten-free baking plus coffee roasting in mm. spare time. Been a longtime listener, follower, fan since starting the coffee world eight years ago, right out of high school. First and best boss at a third wave shop was a real fanboy whose passion for the craft was absolutely contagious and introduced me to the podcast. Mm. I'm absolutely enamored and in love with your ability to go to origin, work directly with farmers, producers, your mission, vision, dedication and intention you guys have to ensuring every single part of the process is meaningful and impactful while still maintaining the same quality and integrity uh, for every cup you serve. 
Say that you guys are role models would be almost unfair. You've inspired and enlightened and empowered and encouraged and ignited the passions and dreams over and over again. Thank you. Whoa. So for that, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now to continue. I've been toying with the idea of sending a bag of coffee that I roasted just for fun and maybe for maybe potential feedback if it ever worked its way up to you. I'd sort of talked myself out of it, but Jared mentioned in a recent episode that Kenya was his favorite origin, so I figured I'd give it a yeah, shot. Yeah, it's right there. Oh, oh right side. now we, uh, the reveal. We are looking at the coffee. This Kenyan coffee is our first dialed-in recipe. It's one of our two current offerings. We started just a few months ago and are currently working with an ARC 800 bot from Showroom Coffee, but also given us a fair share of headaches. Multiple broken parts leading to broken morales. A few fixes later, and I think we're hitting our stride. I'd love to send you guys a bag from our next fresh bash if you're interested. Batch. Whether we get feedback or not, it would be such an honor for you guys to just try it out if you want. And with it, I'd for sure include the roast curve, re the recipe, and the graph, all the specs of origin, elevation, etc. Drink it, critique it, or also literally take a look at it and throw it away and never think of it again. <laughs> the choice, the choice is yours. That'd be just so amazing if we were just like, well, thanks, and just well, yeah. Where's the trash can? <laughs> this, where? this is coffee. Where is All right. It? She apologized for how long the email's gotten, but no here are apologize. the questions. She appreciate any response advice. Ooh. Question one: What are some of the more important initial steps and goals you would maybe recommend to someone starting a roastery with the end goal? of it being a cafe or the end goal being a cafe. So yeah, I mean, that's right. What, so what are some of the more important initial steps and goals that you would recommend to someone starting a roastery with the end goal of like also opening up a cafe? Dang, let's read all six of them. I mean, okay. Or, or you want to do one by one? Well, I mean, I was just one thing that comes to mind is oh, if you have a good. roastery and you're potentially able to sell coffee, maybe find a i mean i'm assuming you're going to use that roastery to fund your cafe but maybe it'd be really great to find a couple wholesale partners that you could work with so that when it's time to open your cafe you maybe have less of a loan to take out or something you can, yeah, I mean, you can save up of, some money right? right i think of like location right Absolutely. like it's like often your roastery locations are going to be in very different parts of town than maybe your cafe right? they're saying so they're like, starting a roastery or have one already i guess i'm assuming they have one but yes agree if someone's Keep going. starting a roastery first first okay yeah the location goal a thousand of percent having a cafe mm -hmm. right it's like just make sure that where you're starting is a good would be a good place for a cafe in the future like while have also an being able to be permitted as a roastery now right, right? yes i mean yeah I, I think community outreach is one of the biggest things that you can do pre-game opening a cafe yeah because when you have a cafe, the people that are going to be supporting you, you're, the goal is not to be super famous and big. The goal is to support the community that's around you. Yep. So whatever you can do to show up for that community around you, whether that's doing pop-ups on the weekend, pop-ups in different parts of town, figuring out some sort of mobile pop-up, like any mobile offering. Yeah. And it seems like the world is kind of more, what do I want to say, forgiving towards that now than it ever has been. So like post-COVID, like before COVID, you'd have a restaurant or a coffee shop and the restaurant or the coffee shop needs to be open every day for people to kind of build these patterns around it. But since COVID, it, it's been really common to do pop-ups and special events on this weird ad hoc basis. Mm -hmm. You know, I think of the bread boy guy here who does the smash burger, since yeah. we're already talking about that, is <laughs> he's built a following locally and his schedule changes like every other month. He's like, I'm at Humble Sea every day. Right. No, I'm just here Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, now I'm at Avanti. And it doesn't seem to hurt him or bother anybody still able to make a name for himself and serve his community. So I would just say, do what you can to get out there. You know, like yeah. we did the pop-up at Companion because they were the bake shop that we use for our pastries. They were closed on Monday. Yeah. So before we ever had any of our locations, we would just show up every Monday, swap out all the bags of coffee, and just kind of build some rapport with people in the community that's essentially this is essentially what we had we had essentially like a really a small ro roastery yeah. mm -hmm. before we had a cafe yeah right? maybe decide as best you can again you're maybe not going to be able to have the capital to do everything but have the plan of business set knowing what you need to do to be successful and to take care of whoever's in, in that business so it's two people like that's the thing we knew we'd have to have three cafes in santa cruz in order to just live in santa cruz period so 
Right, to like support the to, team. To that support we have. a team that we have and just provide us literally with the amount of salary that we can yeah. pay rent in this town. We had to have three cafes. So yeah. with that, what's that look like for you and your company and people you'd like to bring along? Yep. Keep all right, going. Number two. Whew. How often, if at all, did you change up the beans when starting? We can't afford hundreds of pounds of green coffee at a time. And sometimes by the time we sell through a bean, it's out of stock when we go to reorder. Yes, yeah, so they're talking about like buying small lots, like, right? Yeah, sure. We did that a yeah. lot. Yeah, we did that. Until we got the answer. Yeah, so I mean, we did that for over a year. Sure. And then about even right. after we had the answer, our single origins were kind of on... They were short buys. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we, we, we would invest once we got enough money. That was it. We invested in the answer. The truth would change and that was we were super variable so those were small lots and then we had friend zone decaf so the decaf and the answer components we bought a fair amount of yeah so i think it's totally okay that they change again i think for us it was like identifying a style correct that yep. we wanted yep. the coffee the roast that we wanted the style we wanted to have for the roast and how we wanted the coffees to taste and what type of coffees we wanted to source mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. i feel like that was kind of where we started and as long as it changed it it always changed, but it also had some familiarity because yeah. we had like that through line. Yeah, right? I, you're 100% on that. And I think one of the beautiful things about being a small business really starting out is that you have direct contact with the people who are going to be enjoying what you're making. So it's easier to have the communication of, you know, if I see you every day, it's like, oh, yeah, that coffee's gone. This one's here try this out bill or whatever the heck your name is you know the rapport is there you're building trust with these people and so, you can tell your story right. right and it's 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 easier than having a big company where if something falls off the menu and you've got 15 wholesale partners who are expecting it and they're like dude where where's this thing go why doesn't it taste like, exactly well, yeah. like it did last time yeah you have a lot of flexibility when you're small it's yeah. awesome very fun how's it going over there jerry you got any you got no, 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 I'm not, bean I mean, chewing. It's just, it's, I'm not even eating We don't it even cup it. Having, I'm, just bean I'm, just, I'm smelling it. I'm cracking little, up. The, it smells nice. The, the aroma is good. I'm yeah. just going to have you guys taste Put it. Put one in your since nose. It's late. Since it's Unfortunately. late. Yeah. Unfortunately. We can try and taste it another time and give any feedback in a future episode. Post-mortem. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It does smell nice, so I can give you that. Really? Quote that. Print that on your bag. It does smell it dot, does dot, dot, smell nice. Nice. Jared Truby. Jared Truby. Local legend. Dead so. All right, number three. With a staple roast or blend, how do you ensure year-round availability for the consumer? How does it change throughout the year for you as a roaster? Sure. You can go for it. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So our style is to buy coffee uh, at harvest for what, whichever origin we're buying, right? So take an example of like Honduras, right? We're buying, we're forecasting. Right, and that's that's really like the hard part of the question is that we're buying. If you really want it to be consistent, you're buying a <clears throat> year's worth of coffee or six months or a year's worth of coffee at one time. Um, Which is expensive. you know, say Honduras, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're you're gonna pay financing on it, but it's like you're getting, you know, you have access to the coffees that you want to try to buy when they're fresh. And so say for like Honduras where they're, you know, it's harvest, you know, you can taste April, May, April, May, you know, March, April, May, you're buying it then. And, and really the hard part there is forecasting the correct amount of coffee to buy to take you through the whole year and then managing, maybe creating some type of tools within your business to manage, you know, if you're going to be long, short, coffee what does that look like right mm -hmm. if you overbuy do you have any tools to help you move through that coffee or if you underbuy you know what are what are some of the tools you're going to use to to make up that difference mm. and then if you're small and you're looking at a consistent blend probably what you're going to do is buy smaller amounts of things that fit a certain profile and then do your best to kind of work through green that's changing a little bit yeah because right for sure like when you're small like there's plenty of consistent coffee that you can access from importers that you shouldn't be ashamed about buying to create a, a consistent experience while you're small with the goal of um you know maybe moving toward your own style and 
a, you know a more complex blend or something like that as you get bigger yeah right yeah there it's it's kind of awesome how good you can make some spot coffees taste with thoughtful roasting and qc yeah 100 percent. so there's that all right number four how would you prioritize wholesale accounts versus dtc direct to consumer so right we had <laughs> right we had a website first we had a website first because i mean we had a website first because it was the thing that we could do. Right. Because yeah, the, like, the biggest challenge when you're a small company and you're trying to break into wholesale is nobody knows who you are. Yeah. You know, you're oh. really essentially waiting for someone to take a chance <clears throat> on you, which is you're asking someone to switch up their whole life. You know, if someone business is hard, as I'm sure you know, and there are tricky things that go along with it, and you don't want to fix something that's not broken. So if someone has a coffee shop and they have coffee from a good provider of which there are many around these days. It's got to be pretty compelling for them to want to say like, okay, cool. I'm going to give up all of this, going to give up all this customer support. I'm going to give up everything that I know about espresso to bring in a whole new menu of coffee because I believe in what you believe in. That's just a big thing. So mm -hmm. we went with the website first because we, through our time in the industry, had a little bit of a following. We'd always created some sort of something that people could engage with. You know, mm -hmm. before the podcast, we were always writing a lot. We would go to shows. So we had some small amount of people. Plus, I mean, never forget about your friends and family who are your best sure. supporters in yeah, the beginning. Yeah, talk it out. Yeah. Who would just purchase what we had to offer. And the wholesale portion is a much slower and steadier burn because it's really an exercise in brand building you yeah. know who was our first wholesale this is just my my question who was our first wholesale i mean companion, companion? was the thing that yeah. really changed it for us because that same bake shop that we went into on monday because they were closed they'd been through a couple different versions of coffee so for a while they served four barrel yep. for a while they served blue bottle, blue bottle right? yeah. yeah and my gut feeling from talking to aaron is that they were you know completely happy you know, it wasn't a it wasn't a situation of we're actively looking to switch our coffee program. It was just that little step by step baby step to where, you know, we were doing the Monday pop up thing. We were in the process of opening Portola. I didn't have a job. I'm like, hey, can I come work here? You know, and went and worked there. She gave me a job, paying me more than she should have, <laughs> and I was helping out with a little bit of training. And I was just like an easy person to put on bar for you know their. Primary focus is baked goods and bread. So turns out you're good at making espresso. Right. So I'm good at making espresso. So I'm making espresso. And then it was never, you know, I think she brought it to us. I don't think yeah, I, I don't think we I don't like, think I ever like sold her. People. She was like, Hey, do you think guys think you could do the coffee for and I'm like, Well, yeah, like totally. Yeah, I mean, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we wouldn't have to bring in our stuff on Monday either. <laughs> you could mm. just roll hard. So yeah, I mean, um, everything's a everything is a brand building connection based basis yeah. when you're small. It's like really more person to person than it ever is. I know, like people and even us, it's like we spend a lot of time and energy getting our ducks in a row online and making sure your website's great and making sure your presence on Instagram is great and as the brand starts to expand, I think those things become really important. But if I was starting out, it's like, I wouldn't count on getting any wholesale accounts right away. And I would just lean into as much connection yeah, and building connection, as, as possible. Yeah. And, you know, you can use those social sites and social media to kind of tell your story so that, you know, people have something to sink their teeth into when someone who you've built a connection with wants to tell someone else. Yeah. So it's like, Uncle Jerry, who lives in San Diego, is like one of our biggest fans ever, and he's just family. So, you know, in the early days, those stuff that we're posting on Instagram is like, we have a personal connection with him. He loves what we do, and he wants to show it off to his friends because he feels connected to it. And that's yeah. what those things are for. They're not magically going to get you wholesale accounts. So it starts with the person to person connection. Three. I had, a real, nice time, in there. I had a real nice time at Jer, Jer's house when I had the flu. Dude. <laughs> Jared is some wholesale sweating. 
Just doing some wholesale training in San Diego with the flu. Just killing it. They're like, you don't seem like you have the flu. I'm like, definitely do. Definitely, definitely do. Thanks for the orange juice, Jerry. (laughs) (laughs) Hooked me up, dude. (laughs) That's all I remember. Orange juice and sweating in a bed. Anyway, next. (laughs) Next question. How did you divide the labor at the beginning while still keeping in mind the skills that each person brought to the table? Dude, this is this is great questions. Yeah. We just did. No, I washed <laughs> all the dishes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Expert. Expert. I mean, we kind of, Chris went in the roastery, I went in the cafe, generally. I mean, and we all support each other, like, went both ways, too. Like, you'd work yeah. shifts in the cafe, I'd come help out in the roastery, Chuck would help in the roastery, Chuck would wash dishes. We all, yeah. Right? I mean, we, we all did a little meetings. bit of everything. We all touched it. So we it's did, like, but it was still, yeah. we had our, like, core skill set. So sure. Yeah. Jared and I have just, like, a huge history of working in cafes. Um I've never managed cafes because I've never wanted to, but Jared has, and he's been, you whether know. Whether I liked it or not. Whether I liked it or not, you're managing <laughs> the fucking cafe. So. Here's a number. Charles <laughs> comes from the green, like his introduction to coffee is in green coffee, as he's talked about on this podcast. Um, but he's never actually worked in a cafe. So when it came to working, making beverages, that's not his bag. So everybody was at Portola. When we opened, we had the one store, the roastery was in the same building as the cafe. Yep. Everything was right there. Probably smaller than the one you're going to want to have. 1,300 square wanted. feet total, total cafe and roastery. Yeah, yeah. You're going to want a little bit bigger if you're going to try to well, do this. You're going to want whatever you can get. That's yeah. fair too. <laughs> so, that's yeah. also fair. That's yeah. also um, fair. So we were all in the, we were all at the space every day and jared and i would be on bar a lot jared took the lead in more of the cafe things and the job that i had previously had was failed experiment with a roasting company so i was more tuned into roasting at that point so i just gravitated towards there plus i lived really close to the building just like three blocks literally yeah just a few minutes of a walk so it was easy for me to come back and roast at night Mm -hmm. after we had closed Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of space constraints so, but I think, I mean, I think the thing, well, this is how I felt about it. Yeah. I don't know how you guys felt about it. I don't want to go into business with almost anybody. Like going into business with somebody sounds like a fucking terrible thing to me. So I'd be really picky about who I went into business with because I had some, I don't know, just like some best times of your life. Well, I had some issues, but I also just like Flash in general, me as that. a person, it's like, I'm a pretty private person and I'm kind of pricky picky with my friend group like yeah. I'm not like that super social like everybody comes along I'm just you know I'm generally friendly but there's not a lot of people who I'd want to do like these big things in my life with fair so the way I saw the three of us I was like okay first things first I have some sort of base level of trust with all of these yeah, people we we're gonna do it yeah we're gonna do it and then what helps me is like I close my eyes and I'm like would I want to do this myself? Absolutely not. You already said that. That sounds like a terrible idea. I'll do it again. <laughs> and then am I cool with wading through the unknown and not holding anything against someone when it's unclear like what each person's contribution is aside from like the cut and dry stuff? Sure. Like, you know, you're obviously the leader in the financial sphere. You have that background. You know how to do those things. Like... I love to do storytelling stuff. And in the beginning it was roasting, but that's not really my bag. You know, like Jared's really awesome in the cafe and he's really awesome with, you know, guest experience and has the most experience managing retail locations where I'm just like, I'm completely comfortable behind the bar, but again, never managed. So it's like, how does that all stack up and become equal? I don't fucking know. It's just like, who's the best at what and put them in that zone and let them cook, you know? Yeah, And maybe just being okay that like, nothing's ever going to be like a hundred percent equal, but if you like trust and believe in the people that you're working with and your business partners and, Ebbs and that you're all willing to do whatever it takes right. is another thing when you're starting right. a business is like, you're just gonna have to do whatever it takes and trust the people working mm. next to you and yeah. And, and believe that work. Yeah. I guess that that's it. And like, as, everyone's got a special skill try to put those people in those places as much, much as of possible. the time while yeah. also knowing that in the beginning you're gonna have to do a little bit of everything you gotta yeah. do it all like there's no week where 
you know, we all didn't hang out in the roastery. We all didn't Bag wash coffee, dishes. We totally. all didn't clean up everything. We're like cleaning toilets, like the whole yeah, jam. Yeah, you know in I mean? the back room over and over again. Yeah, yeah. so it's like everybody Sealing the floor. Sealing the floor. Dude. Shout out Jason Farrell, dude. Still, <laughs> still the man, dude. Jay still Farrell. DRE. <laughs> what question are we on? That Last was, one. Five, what? Yeah, that was numero oh, cinco. No, Here comes dude. Six. Yeah. In hindsight. Uh, always 2020 dude at least where would you have focused your energy if you were able to take a step back and see the holes areas that should have been filled but had maybe gone <laughs> stop it Jeez. Charles <laughs> Charles backdrop live <laughs> I don't think anyone saw my leg go <laughs> I don't think it's up all the way it's not dude that's Put what it up she all said the... someone's gonna come in in the morning and the bat the coffee's gonna fall all over the floor <laughs> jeez that's, that's true Ugh. My joke was really good. Anyway, <laughs> respect, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Let me go round two with this one. That's also what she said. In high. <laughs> There's some heavy editing on this. Thing. Hell yeah. Also what she said. <laughs> <laughs> leave it all in. <laughs> Absolutely leave it all in. In hindsight. This is professionalism. Where would you have focused your energy if you were able to take a step back and see the holes areas that should have been filled? Yeah. Stop. But <laughs> had maybe gone. Hindsight, I'd have done way more jokes. Okay. I'd say clearly I'd have stayed funny the whole time. Not taking this too seriously. Keep going, dude. What would we have done different? Right? It's like, what would you have done different, right? When you look back, like, see the holes that could have been filled but went unnoticed at the time. Is it because of my that's what she said joke that you can't say holes unfilled? <laughs> Is that the problem? Looking back, what do you know now that you didn't know then, Jared? That's the answer question. Mm, I would like to say, even though it'd be really hard, truthfully, is that you wouldn't feel so stressed out and feel like every decision was like make or break for the business mm. and that you wouldn't take on as much stress through that process. I'd like to say that that's what I wish would be the truth. I don't know if I could do that or not, though, because it is really every decision is really you know there's a pinnacle to it however i think based on how it shook out things felt more intense than they actually were because of my inexperience that for me would be 2020 i would probably try my best to carry less stress about more things if that makes any sense yeah yeah definitely cool i mean i've got one that is like Man, sometimes you feel you need this one person or mm. like the business isn't going to work. Sure. But that actually, you know, it's like maybe that person moved on or, you know, something happened and it's that person's gone and there's a new other great person here and that the business still works. Mm. Right. I think we've like, I That's know really I we've That's stressed a, a lot about like specific people I when too. really if if you have the leadership from the top and you have what you believe and the values and the mission that like there are other amazing people out there that can, can fill that role. I think that's great insight. That's a really great one, man. My turn. I mean, if you want, I mean, those are answers. They got answers. Yeah. Good question though. That one falls in like a subsidiary of what I was saying for sure. Cause that's mm. a place I would be like, yeah, that we started. What if? Yeah, yeah, so it's if like this, what if losing person? sleep and losing sleep, and we knew the answer. And every time we walked through it, it was all fine. Yeah. Hard. Like, yeah. But fine. One of the things that I think about sometimes, because we were so focused on our culture and our mission and our values and creating a workplace that was different, that was the workplace that we wanted to create, we almost focused on those things, but in their ethereal version a little bit too much. And sure. it got disconnected from the actual work that needed to happen mm. on the day to day. And those two things are really connected. Like the culture and the work go together. But we spent so much time on these big, almost pie in the sky things that didn't have anything to do with what we were doing day in and day out. And I think, well, it set a weird precedent for some of our employees. Mm. And it also took away a little bit of the magic from like how special this thing is that we're doing right now. Mm, yeah. And I think that every, you know, everything you do, like that mission that you have comes back and is expressed through that work that's happening. Sure. And I, I think we, I could have leaned into that a lot more. Yeah. I think some of that was our inexperience, right? And just yeah. being able to connect the dots. Totally. But I would almost, 
Yeah, yeah, totally. I agree, though. I feel that. For sure. Well, that's that. that's the, yeah. That's the whole Never point. Never would have known, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole point. Who would have known? So do that better than we did. Just do it better. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter because you'll have different things for sure. So yeah. you're just like, what? No way. That happened? What? What? No, yeah, I thought those were all great questions. Super thoughtful and really awesome. Oh, are we done? Are I we done? done? <laughs> I guess we're done. PWSS. All, yeah, you guys. Tag. Great. You guys went harder on the on the emails than I thought you would. Oh yeah, you thought I was gonna fucking be a chump, bro. This is yeah, the new me. All right. This I'm inspired by Jared now. <laughs> it's right. a freshie. He came back from SCA. Thanks, guys. I was there too, dude. In, In spirit. spirit. Yeah. No, these are well. They're great. They're great. They're really good questions. Questions. I I really like how honest they are. They're like the, yeah. they're very open. They feel really authentic, and they're very specific and pointed you know they're not they're not really vague like how would you do things better it's like it's yeah. like how would you do this specific thing right yeah i better. like that write us questions like that all the time we'll answer them no problem hey everyone that's the podcast for the week thanks so much for listening if you heard something that inspired you let us know or tell a friend these are the types of connections that are the most important to us and that we seek to create every day if there's something you heard and you want to know more about, send us an email to podcast at catandcloud.com or head to our website, catandcloud.com slash podcast and let us know. While you're on our site, check out everything we have to offer. Dive deep into one of our single origin coffees or pick up a little treat for yourself. We have something for everyone, so check it out. Also, find us in the usual places, YouTube, Instagram. We're always there sharing amazing things. All right, that's it. Thanks everyone for being awesome. We'll be back next week.